Hi, I'm Jim Hogan, and in this video, we're going to talk all about easements. So stay tuned. So what is an easement? We're all familiar with utility easements, but there are a lot of other types of easements other than utility easements. By definition, an easement is the right that one person has in the property of someone else. So let's take a look at the five different types of easements. The first is called an easement appurtenant, the second an easement in gross, then an easement personal, an easement by necessity, and finally a prescriptive easement. We're going to take these in the order and discuss them in some detail. So let's take a look at what's called an easement appurtenant. So let me set up a scenario for you. So here we are, you have, let's say, a five-acre piece out here in the country somewhere, and there's the county road, and you own this particular property, and you decide you want to split the property and sell off the piece next to the road. And in doing so, let's call you parcel D, and let's call the other parcel parcel S. And in making that split and selling parcel S, you, of course, would want to create an easement across S's property to get in and out of your property. So this easement would likely be for what's called ingress and egress, the right to enter and the right to leave. So in this circumstance, because you hold an easement across a neighbor's property, your property dominates parcel S, so we call you the dominant parcel. And since parcel S serves you with the easement across it, we call that the servient parcel. So whenever you have this relationship where one person owns an easement across a neighbor's property, we have this dominant and servient relationship. And when that happens, by definition, by textbook definition, the easement is called an easement appurtenant. Now, we talked in another video about appurtenances. And an appurtenance is something which is attached to real estate and transferred along with it. Well, we're talking about easements here in this video as encumbrances. So what is it? Is it an appurtenance or an encumbrance? Well, it depends on whose perspective you take. If you take parcel S's perspective, that easement is, you got it, an encumbrance. But if you take parcel D's, the dominant parcel's perspective, that easement is an appurtenant. It is a benefit to parcel D because it gives D ingress and egress to and from D's property. So by definition, then, an easement appurtenant is one which exists uh, where one person holds an easement across a neighbor's property, and we have the dominant and servient relationship. The next type of easement, and let's continue with the same kind of scenario here, is an easement in gross, or just a general easement. So here we are uh, back there on your property, and in all likelihood, both you and S would like to have utilities. And the utility company, whether it's gas, electric, whatever, uh, has an easement not only across your two properties, but also probably many of the properties in the area. Since the utility company does not own any adjacent properties, this type of easement is simply called an easement in gross or a general easement. It's an easement held by, not by an adjacent owner, but by an outside or third party. Both easements in gross and appurtenant easements would be recorded and permanent easements. Now, the third type is called an easement personal. And an easement personal is not a recorded easement. You wouldn't find it on any map. A good example of an easement personal is just a license. Now, that sign there says, private property, permission to enter may be revoked. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. And this happens to be a street, and I'm using that term in quotes, uh, that used to exist here in Tucson, Arizona. It was a shopping mall. Uh, but there was a street that went all the way through the shopping mall, and people would come through there as if it was a public street, which it was not. So the owner placed a sign there, basically giving people permission to come into the property, but stated they could revoke it at any time. In essence, they were giving the public an easement personal permission or license to cross the property. 
Another form of easement personal would be that which we might give to a, the postman or the UPS driver or the FedEx driver. Just the right to come on the property to deliver the mail or packages. You know, you could actually say to the UPS driver, well, don't come on to my property. You wait at the curb and I'll come out and meet you to pick up the package. But in reality, that would be rather foolish. So we give them an easement personal. The next type is called an easement by necessity. And now we start to get a little bit more complicated here. So with an easement by necessity, let's say you own this parcel of land and you split it into two parcels as you did before. But you did not create an easement which resulted in the par one of the parcels being landlocked. So let's say, for example, you created these two parcels. You kept the one by the road and sold the one inside or the landlocked parcel, never creating an easement. Well, in that circumstance, once the landlocked person or the landlocked property found that they were landlocked, they could go to court and the court would require you to give them an easement across your property. That easement would be referred to as an easement by necessity. And once they acquired that easement by necessity, guess what form it would take? Well, because they now hold the landlocked property, which is no longer landlocked, holds an easement across your property, an adjacent property owner, right, then this would be an easement appurtenant. The last one is called a prescriptive easement. And a prescriptive easement is one that comes about through long and continuous use. So let's say here we are back to parcel D and parcel S, and there's a school around the corner and the kids cut across parcel D just to get back and forth from school. Rather than uh, go all the way around the corner, they just cut across the property and they've been doing that for a long time. In that example, after long and continuous use, it's very possible that the kids, or the public in other words, could claim a permanent easement across parcel D. And if so, that would be referred to as a prescriptive easement. So a prescriptive easement actually comes about under what's known as adverse possession. Uh, long and continuous use can give rise to a permanent easement called a prescriptive easement, or as we'll see in another video, give rise to actual ownership under what is known as adverse possession. Now, once easements have been created, how might they be terminated? Well, Let's say that we have parcel D and parcel S here like we had before, but then D buys S or S buys D. Since what we have here is we no longer have two separate owners, and by definition, an easement is the right that one person has across uh, somebody else's property, what we now have is a merger of interest, so the easement is terminated. The second way to terminate an easement would be through a quitclaim deed. A quitclaim deed is simply a deed by which one person gives up some interest in property to another. So let's say that D held that easement across S's parcel and no longer had any need for it. D could transfer their interest, release and quitclaim their interest in parcel S to S by giving S a quitclaim deed. And the third way in which the easement could be terminated is by a court action. An action to quiet the title. I love that term, a quiet title action. So this would be a court action brought about to remove this easement or any cloud on the title. Well, that's it for our video on easements. If you liked it, please click the like icon. Also, please make sure you subscribe to our channel.